Do you compress your backups? If you do, you're going to want to tune into this episode where we talk all about the new capabilities in SQL Server 2022, this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by David Pless, who's no stranger to Data Exposed, so it's great to have you on the show, David. Thank you. We're going to be talking about SQL Server 2022 integrated acceleration and offloading right. with Intel Quick Assist technology. Right. Can you tell me who needs this? What is it? OK, so if you are backing up and compressing your databases today, especially in the mission critical environment, mm -hmm. you definitely should care about this. Okay. Okay. So we know that we're compressing our backups already because we need to save on space. We need to save capacity. The problem is, is that choice puts us in, often in a spot where we're choosing between customer workloads mm -hmm. and our business continuity and disaster recovery strategy. Sure. Right. So especially if we're pushing up against that compute which we know we all are because we want to take the most out of the resources that we have, mm -hmm. the most out of the systems that we have, we end up in this spot, right? Now, there's a bunch of third-party solutions out there today, software-based solutions. They tend to drive more compute. Okay. They're not integrated into the SQL Server engine, right? And um, it causes really a support scenario because you, you can't manage it the way you would like really like to mm -hmm. manage it. So the answer here is hardware offloading and acceleration. And that's what we have what, what we have in SQL Server 2022. Cool. And it's a built-in acceleration technology. Okay. How okay. does it work? Okay. So and I'm walking you a little bit through the process here as well. So we have an SP configure option, the hardware offload enablement option. This would turn off all accelerators. It toggles it on or off. By default, it's off, and this is what you would need to to enable it. Then the next step is the choice on hardware or software mode. Now, okay. this, is, this part I think is really interesting. Okay. Because if I'm choosing hardware mode, I'm choosing to offload to this external device, I'm choosing to protect the host system. Okay. Okay. Not necessarily faster, but protecting the host system. Could be faster, depends on the device. Okay. Software mode is going to be leveraging the Intel drivers and software on that local system, on that host system's compute. So do I protect the system with hardware offloading, mm -hmm. or do I opt for what software can give me on the base machine? Okay. All right, whether it be a VM or bare metal. Right? Sure. Okay, so here's software mode, and that's what you would need to do. Now, at this point, you're going to restart your SQL Server service because we have to load those drivers into the SQL Server process space, right? Okay, and this dynamic management view, I absolutely love this dynamic view. Okay. SysDM server accelerator status. This will tell you all about the accelerator that is enabled, the driver version, the reasoning. So it's really good for troubleshoot. Cool. And this is how you would use the default um, MS Express if you wanted to specify the algorithm. So you notice it's just an uh, addendum to the compression um, based ba uh, backup database statement. And this is how you'd use QAT deflate. Okay. So it's that simple. So if you did nothing at all, right, and you just brought your scripts from 2017 or 2019, mm -hmm. it, we're not going to break anything. Your backups are just going to run with the MS Express. Okay. If you want to specify, you need to say algorithm QAT deflate. Okay. You want to see a demo? Yeah. Let's see. This take a is look. really cool. Okay. So again, what we see here, and, and again, the hardware offload enablement is an advanced option. So I'm going to run this, and now here's that choice, hardware or software. I'm going to go hardware mode here. Okay. So we are saying that we, we're using the QAT okay, accelerator, and when we run this, we're going to have to have that next step. As we mentioned, we have to restart the SQL Server service. So I'm going to run this here. I'm going to restart the SQL Server service. And I'm doing this to load those drivers into the SQL Server process space. Got okay. it. All right. So once this is done, then what I can do is use that dynamic management view, SysDM server accelerator status. And what you see here is the accelerator. 
the description of that accelerator, the mode, the reason why you're in that mode. This, mm -hmm. is, the, this is what's so great for troubleshooting. Did you see the hardware? What library, what driver version am I using? So from a troubleshooting perspective, right. this couldn't be, it really couldn't be better. It's exactly what we want. And by the way, we, do, we document all of the mode uh, description reasons. Another way of troubleshooting, I love doing this, SP read error log, and I'll just look for anything. Intel, it happens to be the accelerator that comes with SQL Server 2022, just to get an idea of what is the storage acceleration library, what, what driver do we have available, and so forth. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a backup database with no compute overhead at all. Okay. okay? So this is just going to give me a baseline of like of what's going on, and I'm going to make a note of that baseline because this is going to be important. Baking a cake a little bit. I've got the clock going. Okay. <laughs> so I like doing that. So I'm going to take uh, the message that we have here, and notice 86 seconds roughly, 3,000 megabytes per second with no compute overhead at all. Okay, so we're going to take this note and make this documentation here, because I'm going to go nice. back and compare to this. Okay, again, I'm going to do another MS Express backup. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, though. I'm using a sys internal tool, CPU stress, to push this machine okay. almost to the edge. Got it. So nothing going on yet, right? So let's kick off these workloads. I'm going to kick, up, kick them both off, and I'm going to push the go. CPU, yeah, right at 94%. Okay. Uh -huh. This is so, so common. I've got so many customers in this spot, right? They, they want to take the most of their, of their systems, right? The problem is with the default MS Express compression algorithm, the, mm. here's the challenge. I'm going to push this not at the edge, over the edge. So not only is my backup suffering, my, yeah, SQL whatever Server else. Workload, yeah. right. my SQL Server workloads are suffering. So this is what I mean. Customers choosing business continuity or disaster recovery versus customer workloads. They have that challenge all the time. So how long is this backup going to take? Does it take longer? It doesn't take that much longer. Okay. It's the CPU that's the problem. It's really getting hit. It's, it's, it's the a, other workloads. Right. It's a bit. It's so 87 seconds, 2,916 megabytes per second. Again, we're going to make a note of that. Okay, but of course, we haven't seen the QAT deflate yet. That, that's where it gets pretty interesting. So we're gonna, same backup command, the only difference here is we're using the QAT deflate algorithm, and I'm still at that 94%. Okay, because okay. you still have this workload running. Yeah, the workload's never mm -hmm. stopped. In fact, I'll even kind of bring it up here just so you can see we're still cooking 94. pretty well yeah. here, 94% utilization, and we're gonna see, uh, what happens next, right? So again, I'm kicking this off now, and notice that I only go to 97%. It's only three percentage points higher than what we were before. Mm -hmm. My SQL Server workloads are running They're fine. fine, Yeah. right? My backups are actually going to complete a little faster, and I'm even gonna get better compression so I have better capacity savings. But take a look at this. This is what's interesting here. So I'm going to drop this note in, and we're going to compare all three. So that was 76 seconds, I think around 3,300 megabytes per second. So the MS Express took 87 seconds, mm -hmm. 2,916 megabytes per second. That was with compute overhead. Right. So the QAT deflate took 76 uh, seconds, 3,353 megabytes per second. Here's the thing it outperformed the MS Express without any compute. Wow. Right. So the Intel QAT was able to outperform the MS Express even with all that overhead. And you also get better capacity savings. Nice, yeah. This is gonna be music to a lot of folks' ears, Absolutely. I'm thinking. Absolutely, if you're compressing your backups and you're running against compute challenges because of that, hardware offloading is Got perfect. It. For so those customers. how do people get started with this? So I would recommend going out to the SQL Server What's New, SQL Server 2022 What's New page. Mm -hmm. There's an uh, integrated acceleration, hardware offloading, and then go to the Intel Quick Assist technology landing page so you can learn all about the technology and what it can do for you. 
Cool. Awesome. Well, David, thanks so much for showing Absolutely. us this. This was really cool. I really enjoyed yeah, thank this. You. And I learned a lot. I think our viewers probably learned a lot. For our viewers, um, be sure to check out this technology. We'll put links in the description for you to learn more. If you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. Mm -hmm.